Now I would like to introduce our third speaker, Dr. Salma Siddiq, the ex-dean of social sciences, NAST. We look forward to hearing from you, ma'am. Thank you, Anaya. And I've been listening very attentively to the two speakers, um, and I'm really grateful to both of them, and especially Dr. Justin Varney. I think you have really clarified and put the issue in, in a very con in, in a context which is very helpful for us to take the discussion forward. Uh, Dr. Shazad has also like given uh, a very good perspective from a health uh, from the health issues that plague us. And what I want to do is that take these two conversations, two presentations, and try to contextualize um, from a Pakistani perspective. What does it mean when we are talking about uh, the social health in our context, equilibrium, a global perspective, and where does Pakistan stand? Um, I cannot help noticing um, that when we talk about social health in the context of Pakistan, we are not taking stock of some of the realities and the statistics um, that speak a lot about what social health means for us. For instance, if you look, look at um, the figure that how, as per World Bank report that last year, that for almost 40% of the, our population are living below poverty. And there are 26, about 26 million students, uh, children who are out of the school. What kind of social health are we talking about? What specific meaning are we going to give to social health when we are talking about it in the context of Pakistan? So that is something very important. And also, uh, please keep in mind that about 60% of our population consists of uh, young individuals, young people who are below the age of 30. So a population that is young and a significant number is out of school. 40% is living out of uh, living below poverty. These are the hardest statistics when we, we must pay attention to when we are talking about what does social health mean for us. Um, and then there are other factors as well. Uh, looking at it, we must realize that when we talk of social health, and Dr. Justin very clearly said that only 20% of the medical intervention is contributing to health, and the rest of the 80% is all the intervention that is focused towards the taking care of the, those social aspects that enhances the social well-being and the social health. And we also talk about very often in the context of Pakistan of the social capital, that how people are resilient and how innovative they are, how many uh, capacities they have. Yes, they are. And majority of our people have been through like uh, floods, earthquakes, and many other adversities, but they thrive back. They thrive back because of their own individual resources. What is it that we have done as a system uh, to help them either defend themselves through the vagaries of um, uh, weathers and uh, climate changes that they are suffering? And this is again, uh, we are end of the July, August is here, and we are, it's a season of monsoon, and we already have started listening to all the uh, damages that is happening. Uh, because of the rain and other weather-related um, hazards. So what is it that we we are seeing it? We cannot deny it. We read it. It sometimes it feels like we don't, we read them, we are aware of these uh, happenings, but we don't connect it together to understand that how it is impacting an individual and the community. So until and unless we look at it, at all the aspects of it, we won't be able to talk about social health. Um, how an individual is doing? What is the minimum wage here? Is he able to afford a good meal for himself and the family? Can he put his children in school? 
is the school offering the kind of education that ensures the cognitive development, emotional development, employability, becoming a good citizen? Is this happening or not? Or just entering into a school is not, enrollment in a school is not, the quality education also is very important. So these are the questions that become very important. Well-being is something which is, uh, even the constitution of Pakistan talks about and gives importance to it. So it's not something that is, we are talking about something which is, is not an individual's constitutional right. So it is, but how, what are we doing? Are we giving enough uh, attention to this kind of perspective or not? Uh, and social health, just leave that aside. Even health has not been, uh, has not gained the political attention as it should have. Like none of the political parties manifesto includes health, the focus on health or provision of health or to services or health services. That is not seen. And there are very limited um, interventions or the policies uh, that have really been implemented to ensure the health services for a common man. With respect to Pakistan and we, uh, the educated ones, uh, often interact with similar, in similar class to similar people who are also educated and have access to health and uh, good living. So we, uh, we tend to look at the other aspect of uh, how, the, how generally people uh, behave in social spaces. But we are oblivious to the majority of the population of Pakistan who find it hard to really in this era of inflation uh, to afford a, a decent meal uh, for themselves and for their children. Uh, many children I have, have come to know that our staff, employees in the university, they are struggling to purchase the books and uh, other stuff for their school uh, going children. So this is becoming harder for the middle class and the lower middle class. And I, I think the other problem that is that because of the high inflation rate and low productivity, what's happening is that there's a great, greater divide between the haves and the have nots. Rich are becoming rich and the people who are marginalized feel more marginalized because they don't have access to basic necessities. Um, you see a lot of housing uh, development coming up. How many are there for the low income strata? Um, what is that being done for the people who have low, who fall really earn minimum? What is being done? Um, so in many ways, we see that the divide is greater here and people are really fighting for survival. And this is the majority of Pakistan. And if we are talking about the social health of the majority, because I don't want to talk about the social health of the minority who have already access to education, information, and many other resources that they can individually make themselves uh, more resilient to deal with some of the impact of uh, social ill health. So my focus is more those who fall into the, uh, you can say that either below poverty or just above poverty line so that for them a livelihood is, is something of an issue. So that is something we need to uh, be thinking about. Uh, it, it's, to me, it seems like a the population and the, num the increasing population and providing for them and then the uh, dropouts from the school, out of school children and the low wages and all that. It seems like a Sisyphean challenge that we take one step and then we, I think, go uh, 10 steps backward. What is it that we are not doing right that I think perhaps we have to look at that from that perspective? And that's why I like uh, uh, Dr. Justin's idea very much that perhaps the focus has to be on prevention, doing something that you don't have to spend on medicine and treating the illness, but 
build the capacity of the individual and communities so that they use their own resources to be healthy, not only physically healthy, but also socially healthy. This way we are building safe communities, communities that are resilient, communities that depend on themselves and provide to others when they are in need. And unless and until we come from this perspective, that quality of life is more important. And how do we enhance this quality of life for the majority of the people, not those who are already uh, in some way privileged. Having education is a privilege. Have, living in a decent home is a privilege. Having a running water in your home is a privilege. Having food and uh, a roof above your head is a privilege. So look at all these privileges and then talk, try to identify who is it that we are talking about that we should be worrying about. Uh, so there, uh, first, that means I'm saying our spotlight should be at the right place. If we are thinking of the people who already have access to amenities, we won't be able to translate the already existing policies for the benefit of the people. Because what I've been uh, studying and reading through, we have policies. It's not that we don't have policies. The thing is that we don't know how to implement them for who's which segment. So when it is not rightly targeted, what happens, the people who should be benefiting from these policies, they don't. So after 18th Amendment in Pakistan, health and education became the provincial matter. Is it good or is it not good? We can have a debate about that. But uh, I think, at taking advantage from the presence of parliament, parliamentarian ma'am Charles Khan, I would say that uh, perhaps we need to use this to our advantage. Each province has different uh, population, you can say a demographic, and from that demographic, the needs can be determined and the implementation of policy, which is very much uh, responding to the needs of the population in that community, in that locale, that needs to be identified and focused. Instead of having a universal policy for the entire Pakistan, just as uh, you highlighted uh, that, uh, Dr. Justin, you highlighted that for Pakistani community, you tried to decipher that what is it exactly that represents what's happening with the Pakistani community, Muslim community, don't just take them as an Asian. So likewise, like in Quetta and Balochistan, what is the profile? What are their social health needs? Do they have running water or not? Do they have access to health amenities? Do they have like other employment opportunities, education, education that is connected with their, the opportunities in their province, for instance, are we teaching them mining? Are we teaching them other skills which is related to the terrain of the uh, province? Similarly, Gilgit Baltistan or Sin or rural Sin, um, uh, southern Punjab, each area would have a different demographic, and that demography it, uh, is going to determine what is needed by that community. And another thing that I often notice that when we talk like an expert, what happens that we assume as if we know what the issue is and we know what the problem what the solution to their problem is this is where i think we become ineffective if people they may have minimum resources in pakistan but they are very wise and very resilient if we go to them and ask them what is it that they that they need to really bring a little improvement in their life you know they're going to identify it's not going to take a lot of money so uh, listening to the people, going with the intent to help the, the community develop and uh, implementing solution, uh, which is very much related to the relevant to the community needs is a way to ensure community well-being. Unless and until there is a connectivity within the community, there is a sense of community, sense of well-being and not happen. So we have to reestablish, not dismiss uh, what a community is thinking. 